How can we interpret time card data using SQL? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. On the right hand side, you can see some timesheet data, which we've got replicated here on the left hand side. So if I run this, you'll see we've got exactly the same data. So what this is, is for a single employee. And I want to know when the employee checked in and checked out. Now, unfortunately, the time card system is not working perfectly. And because of this, it is possible to have multiple check-ins without a check-out. So you'll see here on day one, we have a check-in at nine o'clock and then another check-in at five past nine. We have a check-out at 11.40 and then one at 11.50. So when did he check in and when did he check out? I would say based on that data, he checked in at nine o'clock and he checked out at 11.50. So it was the earliest of the ins and the latest of the outs. Then he checked in at 1.05 p.m. and checked out at four and then 4.30. So he didn't really stop working until 4.30. On day two, this is more straightforward. He checked in at 7.45 a.m., checked out at 5 p.m. Day three, he checked in. There is no record of him checking out, but presumably he did at some point. Day four, he checked in and checked out. And day five, he checked out, but didn't check in. Now, if you're thinking this is a bit fanciful, this is similar data to what I have seen on a project that I was working on. And so what, what we had to do was to go to secondary sources and find out, okay, from these secondary sources, when did he check in and when did he check out? but I'm just going to be interpreting these time cards for this particular video. What I want is the day number and I want the time checked in and then the time checked out. Now it's not as simple as grouping by the day number because otherwise we would have a check in at nine o'clock and a check out at 4.30. However, I want it to be more refined. I want there to be able to be multiple checkouts like this. Now, if there is a day when there isn't a check in or a checkout, then I want it to record that. So you can see that we have a blank, which in SQL terms is a null. So if you would like to do this as a practice exercise, then you will see this code attached to the video description. So if you want to do that, good luck. And if you get a different solution to the one that I do, please post it in the comments. I'll be interested to see it. Right, so how would I do this? Well, I would be looking to partition it into these particular sections. So how can I partition? What logic is there that I would use? Well, I would say if it's a new day, it's the start of a partition. So it doesn't matter whether it's in or out, if it's a new day. Secondly, if it's an in and the previous one was an out, then start the partition. So that means that there wouldn't be a new partition here because it's an in and the previous one was an in, and there wouldn't be a partition elsewhere where we've got an out, unless it's the start of a new day. So start of a new day and we have an in and the previous one is an out. So the partition start should be here. So that's the first thing that we need to do. We need to code that logic. So the logic is day number is not the same as previous day number, or because either of these has to be true, it is an in and the previous was out. So let's code that. So we use a case. So case when the day number is not the same as the previous day number. Now, how can we code not the same as the previous day number? Well, we use lag. Lag allows us to go to a previous row. Lead allows us to go to the next row. So it's not the same as the day number in the previous row. Now, so far, so good. 
However, we now have to say, okay, what is the order? You know, we say it's not as per the previous, but what are we saying is the previous? You know, we could be ordering by time, in which case this would be the first one, but we're not. I'm going to be ordering by ID. Alternatively, you could be ordering by day number and time, or day number time and in and out, just in case there is an in and out at exactly the same time. So we specify that in the over. So over, order by ID. So when the day number is not equal to the previous day number, then give me a one, else give me a zero. So this is my partition start. So let's run this as we got it so far to see if it's correct. So we've got a partition start here at day two, day three, day four, and day five. You notice we don't have one at the beginning of day one, but that's not going to cause us a problem. We could test that if we wanted and say that when the previous day is null, but it's not going to cause us a problem. So that solves that problem. Now we need to solve the or we're currently in and the previous was out. So what we can say is or the current is in and the previous in or out, and again, order by ID, and I'm going to say not equal to in. So it could be out, they may use something else. I just want to say not in. So now let's have a look at our code and the result. So now we can see we have this additional partition start here in the middle of the day. We didn't have that before. If I comment that out, here's our previous result. And so now if I add in this or, here we've got these partitions. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, what I can now do is to sum up this column as far as we go. So this would be the start of partition four. This would be in partition five. This would be in partition five, even though it's not the start. So I'm going to use a CTE here. I'm going to use a common table expression. So with my table as, and I just put that select statement that I've got in brackets. So I could just say select star from my table and get back to exactly where I was here. However, I'm going to continue select star and I'm going to sum up the partition start. So that is a sum of the partition add or start, here we are. So we're totaling it up. Now that would add up everything, the entire column for every row, but I only want it to add up as far as we've got to. So what I can do now is say, I want this to be over order by ID. So this is my partition number. Now I don't have to specify anything more rows between unbounded preceding and current row or anything like that, because something similar to that is the default, but I could put it in if I wish to, but let's just leave it as that. And now we've got the partition number. Now we start off with partition zero. So we don't have this one at the beginning, as I said previously, but that doesn't cause a problem. What's important is that each of these four rows is now grouped together in terms of they have the same partition number. Then we have these together, these together, that as one, these together, and that. Now what I also want is an in time and an out time. So what I can say is case when in or out equals in, then give me the time card time. And so that is my in time. So what happens if it's not in? Well, we get a null and that's fine for what I need to do. So I don't need to specify it if that's all I want. And similarly, if it is an out, then again, I will have my time card time and that is the out time. So now I've got this, it's the case of, okay, for each partition, what is the earliest in time and what is the latest out time? So I'm gonna put this as another CTE. So I have a comma at the end of the previous one, 
So this is my table two as, and then I can select star from my table two. So I want the day number, I want the in time, I want the out time, but equally I want the partition number so that these are grouped together and I have the earliest in time and the latest out time of that. So I want the day number, I want the partition number, I want the earliest in time, and I want the latest out time. And then what do I need to do? Because I've got aggregations here, I need to group by everything that is not aggregated. So let's have a look. And that gives me the final result that I want. So now we have got an in time of nine o'clock and an out time of 11.50, in time of 105, out time of 4.30. And for those partitions where we don't have an in or an out, we have got no. Well, I hope you enjoyed this practice activity. If you're a bit confused as to what all of these lags with the over by, maybe you've not seen them before, and also these CTEs, then I hope you consider joining me on my Udemy course. So where we talk about all of these things. So here we have got the analytic functions with lag and lead. And here we've got the CTE statement and the with statement. And there's much more in the around 29 hours of teaching. There is a link to this course in the description to this video. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this video. If you liked it, then why not click the like button? Why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. And why not have a look for more practice activities? Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com and keep learning.